what's up guys welcome to my channel if you are new yet my name is divine i'm a musical five minominak drummer and a keyboardist i have been for many many years i started making these videos as a space for music lovers like myself to check out our favorite artists and break down some of our findings that make them so so fantastic make sure you follow us on instagram at the perseverance reaction in order to recommend the favorite singers for us to react to What's up YouTube? Hope you guys are feeling, feeling good. good. Today guys, we're back to doing some new video guys. My name is Divine and welcome it's to the special. festival. So today guys, we're going to react to Why Am I Here? The Purpose of Life guys yeah. by the Merciful Servants. Boom! This is going to be our first time checking us out. Why am I here? Why am I on this earth? Let's, let's send us here. What are the purpose of life here? Yeah? For me, the purpose of life is to spread the word of God to people. Who are not believers and tell them about God, about Christ. The purpose of life is evangelism, to share the word of God to people. Mm. That is just it for me. Aside that, I uh, really don't know. So, what about you? What's the purpose of life? I feel God sent us here for a reason and He has set some steps for us on paths we should follow. So I feel when we obey His commandment, we serve Him, we evangelize, we love our neighbors, we spread His gospel. and. Yeah. It, that is the purpose of us being here, and we make sure that we live in the way He has set for us, so that when the judgment day comes, we'll be able to testify and give glory to His name. That's true, guys. Let's watch this video out, guys. You know how it is. Talk to us right now. Right yes, more to this video. This is a very important topic. All the girls, mm -hmm. But he sees there's something missing. There's a void. Mm -hmm. She's been hustled and she's made a little money and she's sick of being used and abused and all this stuff. And people are ready to get serious. Yeah. You know what? But there's a lot of things out there, a lot of confusion for some people. How do they find out what is... They're smart enough to know, look, that there is a creator. But how yeah. is it that there's so many different ways and which is the correct one? Talk to us. Mm. First, let's walk through the thought process of someone who comes to the right conclusions. <clears throat> they already recognize that this world was not created without a purpose. Mm -hmm. yeah. That, you know, the intricate creation of even ourselves, down to our very fingertips, is something very profound and amazing. Sure. So it couldn't be that this has been designed without, a, without a, an agenda, no a way. cause, a purpose. No way. They acknowledge that there's a creator who designed this in such perfection. Mm -hmm. and. Any decent human being, one characteristic of decency is gratitude. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When somebody does you a favor, I like it's that word. human decency that you want to thank them. Sure. It would be very indecent and inappropriate of you that you had a flat tire, somebody came and helped you out, and you just turned the other way and walked away. Mm -hmm. Or, or drove off. It's, it's, just, it's not appropriate. It's, yeah. not, it's yeah. not common decency. Not at all. And human beings have a sense of common decency across religions and culture. Absolutely. So when you realize there's a creator, you realize that he's created you in such a powerful way and he's given you abilities that he hasn't given other creatures. Yeah. Yeah. And he's given you, uh, you know, uh, all of these faculties, not just your physical faculties, which are amazing enough. Like none of us paid for our eyes and none of us, you know, bought our hands anywhere. They were just given to us. And there are so many others that don't have these things. So you, you, one acknowledges, first of all, that these things were given to him or her without them having to pay for them. And then on top of that, their sustenance, water, the air they breathe, the, the, the family they enjoy, the house, whatever they may have. Mm -hmm. is just, they've been poured upon from every direction with all sorts of favors, none of which they had to pay for. It was just kind of handed down to them. So the very least decent person, well, in some way in their mind, they want to be grateful. So even you'll find the people that aren't very religious, if they win the championship, you know, they'll say, I thank God. Yeah. Right? There's some sense of decency, right? But in, in addition, there's also a sense of appreciation. In addition yeah. to praise, yeah. or, uh, or rather gratitude, there's praise and appreciation. Meaning he didn't just help us, he helped us in such a profound way. And his creation and his creative power is so incredible. Just the vastness of this universe, if you ever ponder over that. Just look at the sky one day and just look at its flawless end to end. Uh, that in itself would make you in awe of the creative power of this one creator. We're not even going to name him yet. Uh -huh. We acknowledge then that this creator who made me, who has a purpose, well, who, who is the, the best person or the best individual or entity rather that can tell me my purpose? Think about this. Uh -huh. If I made this cup, yeah. 
well, I made it for a purpose. True. The, the, the manufacturer of something manufactures something for a reason. You make yeah. a car so it drives. You build a house to live in, right? Yeah. So when human beings construct something, design something, then there's a purpose in mind for which they're designed. So when you acknowledge there's a creator and he created me and he created me quite well with this profound intellect that he gave me and all these faculties and abilities, then what purpose do I have? Where am I going to find my purpose? Well, you go back to the manufacturer. You go back to the creator to find your purpose. You can't figure it out yourself. You have to ask him because he's the one who designed you. So you acknowledge that you are actually, you are uh, this Lord that's over you, the one who's been providing for you and sustaining you and taking care of you, just like he's the Lord of everyone else, mm -hmm. he's the only one that can dictate your purpose. But you also come to another really powerful conclusion, that up until now in your life, maybe you're 20, 25 years old. For 25 years in your life, you didn't live up to your purpose because you didn't even know what it was. Yeah. Right? Okay. So you've been in violation of your purpose. Now let's take a step back. If you have, you know, if I own a computer and it doesn't do what I want it to do, right? It crashes. Mm -hmm. I can chuck it out. I can throw it away. I own it. I bought it for a purpose. Mm. It didn't fit that purpose. So I got rid of it. Back in the old days, some farmer gets a cow, right? A cow stops giving milk. He got it for the purpose of milk. It stops giving milk. What does he do? Slaughters the cow. Yeah. That is you come to the conclusion that you were created for a purpose, you, there's a Lord over you who expects that you live up to your purpose, but for these 25, 20, 19, 18, whatever years of your life, you've been violating that purpose because you didn't even know there was a purpose. You didn't even acknowledge it. But did he punish you for it? Is it, for example, one of your purposes, one, <laughs> one thing under your purpose is not to lie, for example. Every time you lied, was there lightning that struck from the sky and cut your tongue off or... Every time you stole, did your hand just fall off? Or every time you, you know, engaged in something evil, something wrong, did you punish, experience the punishment right away? No, he let you go. He let it slide. He keeps letting it slide. And human beings aren't like that. You know, when we expect something from someone, like an employee, yeah. right? If, you, if I hired you to be my accountant, and I expect you to show up at 9 o'clock, and you don't show up for four weeks, and then you show up the, you know, after, at the fifth week, it's you know, 3 p.m., uh -huh. and say, Where, you know, where's my paycheck? then you've already been fired, right? So you acknowledge oh. you've been in violation and this Lord of yours is far more merciful than anyone ever else you've ever experienced. His mercy is unimaginable. Yeah. His mercy is unimaginable. But then you also realize as unimaginable as His mercy is, if I've come to this conclusion that I don't know my purpose or I haven't sought out my purpose and I've been getting away with it all this time, is it okay if I should just forget about this purpose and continue to not think about this anymore and move on? But, or if, I, if I've reached, if I've come this far in my thought, then I should realize that he knows that I've come to this conclusion. He knows that I realized I should be looking for my purpose. Mm -hmm. So if I stop my search here and say, ah, I'm thinking too deep, better go back to the life of partying, then there will be consequences. I will have to pay for everything that I did. Mm -hmm. Sure. So once sure. This, you reach this thought process up to here. Now what's the next step? You turn to this creator, this mysterious creator that you don't yet know, and you declare one thing to him. I acknowledge that you're my creator. I acknowledge that I'm supposed to be in service to you. Whatever I do in this life is supposed to live up to your purpose that you set for me, but I cannot fulfill that purpose on my own because I don't know where to start. You need guidance. I, I, don't, need, I don't have anything. So even if I want to serve you, mm -hmm. how am I going to do so unless yeah. you help me? Yeah. Unless you help me. So, so far you would mean the thought process. Gotcha. First there was appreciation. Yeah. Then there was his amazing mercy that he let you slide so far. Then there was the idea that there's going to be consequence. So you better get your act together. Mm -hmm. Then there's the idea that you ask him, you, you, I'm going to worship you. I want to turn to you. I want to give myself up to you. We need direction. But I now. need your help. We need direction. We need direction. So now when you ask him for direction, you ask him for guidance. You ask him oh. for the way, the clear, straight mm -hmm. way that to go to live your life. But you also come to another conclusion. If in fact he is as merciful, if, and if, if in fact this is the truth, then you can't be the only one. Definitely. This must have happened before you. There must have been people before that asked for this guidance, uh -huh. sincerely. And there must be people before that were given this guidance, yeah. right? So you ask him, instead of being left out in the, on your own, you ask him to show you a path. Paths that, that ratio. People have already got and that he favored upon, right? Oh. And then there must be other people who asked for that path, 
<clears throat> now listen to this carefully. They asked for that path. They got the path. It's like me asking you for directions. You gave me directions, but I didn't follow those directions. Oh. Right? I didn't follow those directions. You, that's such a person who asks for the favor, gets the favor, and then disregards the favor, is someone who the Creator must be very angry with. You know, there's a person who didn't even get the favor. But there's a person who got the favor and then disregarded it. Uh -huh. Saw the truth and then put it aside. This person is worthy of the Lord's wrath. And then finally, there's a person who asked, who asked for the favor, got that favor, received that favor, yeah. but then mixed his yeah. own yeah. thoughts and desires into that favor. God gave him guidance. He gave him the truth. He gave him clarity. But he didn't like everything that he heard. So he put something of his own in there and became lost. Mm -hmm. Now, this thought process that I've explained to you, actually, the reason I went in this route is because this is the thought process of the Qur'an, the first surah. The first surah of the Qur'an is actually the thought process of someone seeking the truth. Uh -huh. We say, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, the first thing. Yeah. Praise and gratitude belong to Allah, the Lord of all the peoples of the worlds. Yeah. All the worlds, okay? So we talked about praise and gratitude. Mm -hmm. Then we say, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, the unimaginably, exceedingly merciful, constantly merciful. Uh -huh. So this was the mercy part. But then we say, Maliki Yawmiddin, the master of the day of judgment. There's going to be consequence if I, look, if I try to take advantage of his mercy. Yeah. Then we talked about you reaching the conclusion you want to worship him. Iyaka <laughs> na'budu, we worship only you. But we can't worship him ourselves, we, have, we need help. So Iyaka nasta'inu, we seek your help. We seek your help. What help specifically do we seek? Guide us. So what's the next ayah? Ihdina sirat al-mustaqeem. Guide us to and along the straight path. Then we said, this path must not be us alone. There are people that have gone down this road before. Yeah. So we asked to find the road of those who have succeeded before us, the path of those who you favored, not those who earned your wrath, not those who went astray. Right? So this thought process is what we are asking people to consider. It's universal. I didn't take you to the Quran first. I showed you the logic of that path first. Oh. Right? Once you understand this path, nothing I have said is directly saying except Islam. All we're saying is be sincere to the Creator, be grateful to Him, accept Him as your Lord, ask Him to show you the path sincerely, and ask Him to show you those who walked down this path before and succeeded, and keep you away from those who walked down this path but then got lost, then went astray, or earned God's wrath, earned Allah's wrath, right? Now for people who are seeking this truth, what is the measuring stick? The first measure is your own conscience. That's the first measure. The second measure is, if in fact it is from God, uh -huh. then it has to meet one primary standard. And that primary standard is, there can be no one between me and the worship of that one true God. Nobody in the middle. No, nobody in the middle. There can be those who show me that path. Uh -huh. But I'm not going to worship these people that are showing me the path. I'm only going to take their teachings to get to the path. Because they may be the ones Allah favored. Just like I asked to show me some role models, some guides. Yeah. So these are people that are role models, not ones to be worshipped, but rather to be looked at as role models, yeah. as guides. So this yeah. sincere attitude, this measuring stick, with, 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 with this standard, when you try to seek a path, and you try to filter out what is it that's out there, what are the things that are peop people are calling towards, and, you find, and then in that quest, when we ask you humbly to consider, just sincerely look at Islam, yeah. sincerely look at the Qur'an, what is it asking you to do? What is it asking you for? What is it demanding from people? You will find it's essentially saying one thing. We created you for a purpose. Right? And Allah says, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجَنَّةِ وَالْإِنسِ إِلَّا يَعْبُدُونَ We didn't create gender human beings except that they should worship me. That's true. We are all created to worship God and serve Him. Mm -hmm. Give a praise to Him and honor His name. Uh, that is totally true. Um, this was an eye opener, a pure clarification. Uh, <laughs> very happy we checked out this video. It's very, very nice. I know our purpose is also to worship God, but 
to bring people to serve God itself is like a very, very big purpose because the more you win souls to cry to to God, yeah, the more according to what the Bible says, say when a soul is one, heaven rejoice and just mm-hmm. uh jubilating. So I feel like that is a big purpose for me, like winning souls, praising, worshipping, being a role model for people who will be like, wow, I love the way this person is very dedicated and faithful. That is one reason I love about Muslims. They're very, very serious about our religion. I truly love and respect you guys about it. Uh, if you are a role model to people, people see you like somebody can follow and follow your path, not worship you. According to what you heard what you said, yeah. like, you are a role model to them, you are showing them how like it should be, like a guy that you are showing how it should be. That they are there to serve God and also to win people to God to also serve God. So, because some people are already neglecting away from the duty they were sent. Some people don't even know their purpose on it. They feel like everything is about making money, 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 money. Everything in life is not about money. This money, we came to this world, we saw it here, and we will die and leave it here. So it's if you generalize your life about money, you die chasing that money. Mm-hmm. Money goes nowhere. It's always on the set to keep on to always be on the set. It just evolves from coins to using notes. From mm-hmm. notes now we're using bitcoins. Or we're using cryptocurrencies. Mm-hmm. So it's money keeps on it's sure the stay on this earth is going nowhere. So your main purpose on it, there's a creator who brought you to this to this earth and you ought to save, worship him and also bring more individual who have lost that guide their own focus on it to him. So that is basically for me the purpose of heaven of anyone in this set. We are here for a main time, for a temporal time. Then we have to come meet the Messiah, the meet our God who is in heaven. So what do you think? This is very nice. I feel we should all ask our question we should all ask ourselves this question at the point. Why am I here? What's the purpose of life? Because when you figure out what your purpose is, why you're here, you'll be able to focus, you'll be able to know what to do next, you'll be able to understand the next thing to do, you'll be able to know that, oh, this is what God has sent me here to do. Yeah. I'm going to serve Him, I'm going to bring people to Him, I'm going to teach other people what I have learned. So the first thing is to know where, why you're here, then get to know your purpose. Like, it's a gradual process, it's not something you rush. Take it gradually because if you don't learn things uh, a step at a time, you just end up going too fast and then running down too slow. So I just feel this was a wonderful video. I love the way they explained it. I love the energy they gave. And we should just pray to God. Anyway, we're conscious of His glory. Anyway, we're sinning against it. We should just ask for forgiveness. We should focus on the right path that God has blessed for us. I know a lot of us do um, go astray from the word of God. We do go astray from what He has said for us. Just like the video said, God is a merciful Father. He will always forgive you despite what you have been through. As long as you come back to Him, ask for forgiveness and let Him know that you are sincere and you're ready to move in that right direction, that right path. God will definitely be there for you no matter what. He does not forsake His own. And this was very beautiful. Guys, comment down below your first time checking this out. How was your reaction? Give us a thumbs up. Share it as many as you can subscribe to our YouTube channel, guys. You know how it is. We'll see you guys in the next video. Make sure you stay. I just want a bag, like an old lady I'm back, wood smoking, I don't own papers Pass that 808, that don't, don't shake her Oh, bitch, you know I'm grinding like a pro skater Baby, mama bugging, I'm so quick to hit ignore Buku bitches in my bed, I got scales